But I want to think about a different model, and here's how I'm increasingly um, thinking about the healthcare um, sector. Um, and that is, um, there's a sort of supply side which determines how much it costs to treat a particular condition. Okay, and here by, I mean a condition here that is treat someone with a particular disease, so an episode of care. I don't actually mean doing a surgery or having them stay in the hospital for a day because of the substitution across treatment technologies is actually extremely um, important here. So there's a supply side, the efficiency of which determines how much it costs to treat a particular condition. And then there are various demand and other side constraints in terms of what it is that people actually receive. That is, do they want to undergo the procedure given their cost sharing? Is the system set up so that they're allowed to do it, or is there constraints on doing it, something like that? It looks fairly standard, but actually once you start to think about it this way, a few things come out which I think we, we probably don't pay enough attention to. And the first one has to do with the supply side, the efficiency uh, with which medical care is delivered. So if you look not at the sort of level of any particular um, treatment, like say a, a, a opening someone up to uh, do something to them, but if you look at sort of broader measures of system efficiency, the thing that is inescapable um, is that we're wasting an enormous amount of resources. So these are either resources on procedures which are of no value whatsoever, or procedures for which there are other cheaper technologies which are just as valuable, or diseases that we're not preventing in the way that Alice uh, and Mark were talking about them, um, that if we prevented them, we could save a lot of money. That's not true about all kinds of prevention, but it's true about a lot. Or prices that are too high because we're doing things at the wrong providers, so we're paying three times more for the same thing than we need to um, because we're doing it at very expensive places. <laughs> or because of um, uh, uh, administrative costs involved in the billing and operations management, which is about uh, 10 to 15 percent of medical care is probably wasted that way, fraud and abuse in um, some areas of the country. If you put those all together, there's a range of estimates about what is the inefficiency associated with medical care, but on the low end, it's probably about a quarter, and on the high end, it's probably about a half or so. So, that, so you sort of start off there, and you say, okay, so there's that efficiency does the system actually know how to get rid of it? And the answer is yes, it's actually not that difficult to get rid of it. This is the transition that happened in essentially all of American industry. Um, you think about processes of care, so that's sort of the, the, the benchmark here, where the process of care is the treatment of a patient with a particular condition or set of conditions. Um, there are a variety of different things about the design of the operating system that the, the sort of writ large operating system that feed into those processes of care. And what a good system does is it always looks at the outcomes of those processes of care and says, well, how do I do those and get better? So you do performance measurement. That's a key in every um, in every high-functioning business. That then feeds back into some kind of executive leadership that then influences the mechanisms that in turn affect the processes of care. And actually, not only that, you then set a strategy which is going to affect how you organize the institution, which in turn is going to affect the processes of care, and you get a performance loop.